What's up everyone, Charn here, and welcome back to the channel. Coatings can range anywhere from paints, plating, to even thermal barriers that can be applied to the surfaces of our designs for decoration or even functionality. And today I'm going to show you how you can apply coatings to your models. Now we've previously shown you how you can change the color of your parts and assemblies with appearances. If you haven't seen this, I'll add a link to the description or you can click on the card here. Appearances are great because they allow you to create a sense of realism by simply dragging and dropping the appearance onto the part, face, or surfaces. This will help others see the true vision of your designs as you do. But what happens when you need to start considering coatings? Whether you're remodeling your home with a new paint scheme, or trying to make sure that you have the fastest car on the track, or even wondering why the airline charges you for excess luggage. Understanding how much volume and mass these coatings will add to your models can be quite useful. Let's look at how we can apply coatings on our models here in SOLIDWORKS. If you've ever seen an airplane turbine blade, you'll notice that they have a coating around the fin. This coating acts as a thermal barrier to help the turbine blade to maintain its shape when it's exposed to various temperatures inside of the engine. To apply coatings to my models, I'm going to use surface modeling techniques. By using surfaces, I can easily take into account any complex or organic shapes in my designs. When I'm on the surfaces tab on the command manager, you'll notice there is a command that says offset surface. In the offset surface command, when you select a face on the model, the offset surface command will create a copy of the surface at a specified distance. You can even select multiple faces. After all my faces are selected, you can see the preview of what the offset will look like. Now, if you specify a value of zero, you'll notice that the title of the offset surface switches to copy surface. This allows me to create a separate surface on top of all of my selected faces in this command. Once created, the surface is overlaid on top of the selected faces. When I come into the graphics window, I can hide the original body by hovering over it and pressing the tab key on my keyboard. Now I can rotate the model and see that I have a very thin surface where the blade exists on the turbine blade. Since the surface is infinitely thin and has no mass or volume, I want to turn it into 3D geometry. If you look back on the surface tab, you'll notice there is a thicken command. The Thicken command allows me to select a surface and turn it into 3D geometry. Once you've selected the surface, tell it the direction you want to thicken it and specify how thick you want this to be. Note, since I want this to be separate, I need to make sure I deselect the Merge Result checkbox. From there, you should notice that your part has grown by the same amount that you specified for the thickness. The beauty of making sure merge result is deselected is that now I have two separate bodies on my part. When I expand the solid bodies folder, I can right mouse click the second body and specify a material to differentiate it from the original material. Note, you will want to make sure that your materials you choose have the correct density when using this. You may also need to make your own custom materials before applying a material. After I've specified a material, if I want to know the volume and mass, I can click on the Evaluate tab and choose Mass Properties. The mass properties will account for all bodies in the part by default, but I can clear out the part and specify a specific body. This then displays the volume and mass associated with my coatings. If I want to specify a specific color for the coatings for things like paint, I can simply apply a new appearance from the Appearances tab on the task pane. When you apply the appearance, make sure that you choose Body so that it's applied only to the new body we've created. And now that we have our completed part, I can let purchasing know how much they need to procure of the thermal coating. So it's pretty simple. I've easily applied a coating by using surface modeling techniques here in SOLIDWORKS and now my parts can be manufactured to my specifications. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and have gotten something out of it. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up icon. 
or if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. For more tips and tricks, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can also find out more information by checking out our website at GoEngineer.com.